Hey you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is volume nine, what is estification? And it's kind of like alcohols part two. Let's do it. Okay, volume nine, what are estification reactions and their reactions of alcohols? We look at the formation of esters and then we describe those as condensation reactions. The IB understandings, you need to be able to name and draw and show the formation of esters and that understand that alcohols undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions with the acids, which form the esters. We need to be able to write the equation for the formation of the esters in the presence of the right catalyst. So what is an ester? Well, an ester is a group of organic compounds responsible for some of the natural flavors and fragrances we can see and smell and eat every day. Esters are small molecules which are volatile, which means that they're smelly because they're able to reach your nose. They have a low boiling point, which means that your skin is able to evaporate them. Esters are made from a condensation reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol or an alcohol. In that reaction, a small molecule such, of wa such as water is released. Now, esters. Esters are found in perfumes. And every perfume that you will ever have will contain a whole different bunch of esters. Some of those esters you'll be able to smell straight away. As soon as they hit your skin, they turn into the gas form and you can smell them. And then after a while, you wear them for a few hours, you can start to smell the deeper notes, the ones that are taking much longer to remove. So here I have one of my favorites just here, uh, Yves Saint Laurent. Um, it's a really nice ester and it gives a nice sort of smell as the day goes on. It starts off being quite quite woody in the morning and then it gets a bit tobacco-y in the afternoon. Um, and that's the one down there. Now esters all contain the ester functional group. A carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then a single bond to another oxygen. So this is described as the ester functional group, and I put a little box around it. Those esters are made from a carboxylic acid, which contains the C double bond O, and an alcohol, which contains the CO functional group. I've mentioned a couple of things about perfume just before, but two of my favorites, Combs de Gargans, if you ever got the chance, go and check some of those ones out. The Wonderwood is really exceptional. And the Yves Saint Laurent, that's another one of my favorites. So how can we produce an ester? All right, well, here's an example. If we heat a mixture of ethanol and ethanoic acid in the presence of a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst, we produce an ester called ethyl, ethanoate, and water. How does this reaction occur? Well, we have our ethanol, which is a primary alcohol, which has the OH at the end of the molecule with our two carbons and our hydrogens. And then we react that with our carboxylic acid. In this case, it's ethanoic acid. And the way I'm gonna draw this is a little bit weird, but I'm kind of gonna draw the carboxylic acid functional group in reverse because that's where the reaction takes place. The reaction takes place between the acid and the alcohol functional group. Now the catalyst in this reaction is concentrated H2SO4. So that is H2SO4 liquid. And that could be anywhere from five molar to 10 molar. Now the reaction takes place between the OH of the acid and the H of the alcohol, which forms water. And the water is eliminated in this reaction, which is why it's described as a condensation reaction. Elimination of a small molecule is condensation. So here, the water will be eliminated and we will simply join together the two functional groups. So we've now got a spot for the oxygen to bond to the carbon of the ethanoic acid. So here's my ethanol, my two carbons, and then coming off the second carbon, we had our oxygen. Now I'm gonna to go to the acid. So we will now have a bond to our C double bond O, the number one carbon of our acid, and then we've got the number two carbon out the back. This is known as ethyl ethanoate. Now, where does the name come from? Okay, well, naming esters, esters have a two-part name. 
the first part of the name is derived from the alcohol. So the alcohol takes the first part of the name. And what we do is we replace the ol section or the anol section of the alcohol and replace it with yl ul. So we had ethanol, so we're going to replace that and change it to eth ul. Ethanoic acid was our carboxylic acid. So we cut the ic part of the acid and the acid and replace it with O8. So we have ethyl, ethan, O8. So that's where the name of the ester comes from. The first part comes from the alcohol. The second part comes from the acid. Now a general ester equation is where we have an acid and an alcohol and it reacts to form something with the ester functional group and remember that the catalyst must be concentrated sulfuric acid. And the concentration is somewhere between 5 molar and 10 molar. Any of those will do. Sulfuric acid is a very good dehydrating reagent, so it's able to remove the water from the reaction. Okay, so here's some more practice with the naming. What I'm going to do is just going to pick some alcohols and acids, and we're going to have a go at naming the ester. So the first one I'm going to have a look at is if we have methan, methanol and ethanoic acid, we would form a compound methyl ethanoate. The next one, butanol and ethanoic acid. Well, what would we form from those two? Butyl propanoate. The next one, if I have pentanol and pentanoic acid, I would form pentyl pentanoate. Another thing that we might need to do is if we're given an ester, we might need to be able to work out what the two starting materials were. So what was the alcohol and what was the acid? So here's our ester, propyl methanoate. So what was that made from? Well, it must have been made from propanol, because propyl comes from the alcohol, and methanoic acid, because the methanoate comes from the acid part. So propanol and methanoic acid. The next one, if we pull out our ester and it's called ethyl butanoate, what two things was that made from? Well, it must have been made from ethanol, that's where the ethyl comes from, and the butanoate, well, that must have come from butanoic acid. So that ester has been made from ethanol and butanoic acid. Then we might be asked to draw this particular ester. So how would we draw that? Well, we start off with the alcohol. Ethanol has two carbons with a single bond to the oxygen. And then the butanoic acid would have four carbons with the carboxy group at the first carbon. So that's our C double bond O. You can see our ester functional group in the middle there. The O bonded to a carbon with a double bond to the oxygen. You can see that if we split the functional group in half, we can see the alcohol to the left and the acid to the right. Our ethanol on the left and our butanoic acid on the right. Remember, water would be produced in this reaction as well. Okay, so an example. Write the reaction for the formation of the ester propyl butanoate. So the first thing we want to do is we should try and draw out the ester with the full structural formula. So what will this look like? So we start off with the alcohol. Propanol would have three carbons. So we have here our propanol with our OH at the end. Our butanoic acid, well I'm going to flip that around and draw it in reverse just so we can see where the reaction occurs. But we have our carboxy functional group and then we have three other carbons, all with the hydrogens. Remember, the reaction will take place between the OH of the carboxylic acid and the H of the alcohol, which will remove that section as water because it's a condensation reaction. Our catalyst would be concentrated H2SO4, which would give us our ester with our three carbons, a single bond to our oxygen, and then that oxygen is connected to the C double bond O of the carboxylic acid to form our ester.
We might also be asked to do this using condensed structural formula and it's really important that we show the ester functional group in the correct way for the condensed structural formula. So here we have our ethanol CH3, CH2, CH2OH plus our carboxylic acid and this is going to look weird because I'm going to write it in reverse but we have our carboxy functional group and then CH2, CH2, CH3. Again, the reaction will take place between the OH of the acid and the H of the alcohol. So just imagine replacing that section and then putting the two together. Again, our catalyst is the concentrated H2SO4. So we would have the condensed structural formula as CH3, CH2, CH2, OOC, CH2, CH2, CH3. It's really important that you write it as OOC or COO and not OCO. An ester must have a CO, COO or OOC rather than OCO. You'll be marked incorrect if you write it in that way. Okay, the final one, draw the full structural formula of methylpropanoate and circle the ester functional group. Well, methanol, methyl only has one carbon, so we have our carbon with our oxygen connected to our acid, which in this case would have three carbons. So we have our carbon with our double bond and then two other carbons connected together, full structural formula. The ester functional group, if you're asked to circle it and name it, that is that group there, and it is called an ester functional group. Top tips, Bowie mate, some top tips, wear esters every day. Practice naming and drawing as much as you can. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.